What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 41 of our machine learning tutorial series. In this video, in the next couple videos, we're gonna be talking about building our own custom mean shift clustering algorithm from scratch. So to start, we're gonna grab some code that we've already written before, so why not just copy that? Uh, I'm gonna get it from part 37. If you have part 37 code, copy and paste that code, or just this part basically from the top all the way down to colors or go to the part 37 tutorial on pythonprogramming.net or this tutorial uh, number 41 and just grab that starting code. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste. And this is what we have. If we were to graph this up, uh, we get just this. It's just that simple cluster that we've been, we've been working with um, up to this point. So um, also let's, we could add a couple to this just for, just for kicks. Uh, feel free, you can keep the original if you want, or you can add the new data that I'm going to add. It doesn't really matter. Or make up your own. So we'll do 8, 2, 10, 2, and 9, 3. So that should just give us like a new cluster too. So now I've got three clusters to deal with. Just something interesting to do. Okay, so uh, that's our data. Now I'm going to go ahead and comment out these two lines because we don't need to be graphing those anymore. We'll graph once we've... Uh, made some centers and then maybe later it graphed some colors with their groups and all that. So if you recall, the, the, the steps for the mean shift algorithm is first uh, assign every single feature set is a cluster center, okay? And then take all of the data points or feature sets within that cluster center's radius or within the bandwidth and then take the mean of all those data sets or feature sets and that is your new cluster center and then step three is basically repeat step two until you have convergence which just means uh, many of the clusters will converge on each other and become a single cluster and then some will just stop moving and once that's happened you've got convergence you're done and you've you've uh, completed mean shift Okay, so to start, we are going to call this meet class mean shift. Bet you didn't see that coming. And then we are going to have a define init, and then we're going to have self, and then bandwidth. And for now, we're going to set bandwidth to a hard four. And later on, we'll we'll talk more about bandwidth and weighting the bandwidths and stuff like that, which we kind of already started talking about before, but I think that's a way better way than having any hard-coded bandwidth. But we'll start with this for now to keep it nice and simple. And then we're gonna say self.bandwidth equals bandwidth. And that's all for now in the initialization. Now we're gonna do a define fit. And again, here we pass self and data. And then we're gonna have centroids equals an empty dictionary. We don't need anything there. And then we're gonna set the initial centroid. So for i in range len of data, we're gonna say centroids i, so we're giving the centroid a an ID, so that i will be their ID, and then the, so it's the key, and then the value is just data i, so whatever that value is as we iterate through our data, that is the centroid's location. Now, with mean shift, uh, you, uh, you can have a max iterations, and you can also have a tolerance if you want. For now, we're not gonna have well, we'll have tolerance because we'll still hit end up hitting a tolerance most likely. But uh, for the most part, I'm pretty sure even on scikit-learn's mean shift, there's no tolerance or max iteration. So anyway, so we'll start off again, pretty basic with a just while true. So just infinite loop. And then we're going to say new centroids. And we're just going to say that's an empty list. So whenever we find new centroids, we throw them in there. And then now we're going to cycle through basically all of our known centroids. So we're going to say for i in centroids, we're going to have now a new variable, which will be in bandwidth. And that's just going to be an empty list for now, but this will soon be populated with all of the feature sets that are within our bandwidth or within our radius. Okay. And then we're going to say um, centroid equals centroids i. Okay, so this is just how we can get the, the centroid itself because I will just be the key basically. Uh, but to get that value of that centroid, we do that. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna iterate through the data and decide whether or not uh, that feature set is within the, the radius or bandwidth of this specific centroid. So what we're gonna say is uh, if 
and we're gonna say, or rather we're gonna say for feature set in data, we're gonna say if np.linalg.norm, uh, let me go up to the top, make sure we are importing NumPy, yeah, okay, cool. So if np.linalg.norm, and we'll just put the whole method in here, dot norm, uh, and then this would be basically that feature set minus the centroid, right? Centroid is defined here. If that Euclidean distance is less than the self dot bandwidth that we're allowing for, and really, hmm, that's an unfortunate name, honestly. So I'm trying to convince you all that bandwidth and radius are not the same. You could say if something's within the bandwidth, but if something's within the radius is a distance and bandwidth is like the entire thing. So I'm gonna actually call this radius. I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this because uh, anyway, whatever, <laughs> self dot radius. We'll say radius for now. Okay, so if that norm is less than the radius, that means we are within the bandwidth or within the radius. So then we're gonna say in bandwidth, this can stay bandwidth because that still makes logical sense, uh, dot append feature set. So we just append that feature set if it happens feature set, if it happens to be within that bandwidth. Okay, now outside of the if, outside of the for loop, we're gonna recalculate that mean of that centroid. So we're gonna say the new centroid is gonna be np.average and then in bandwidth axes equals zero. So this just gives us the mean vector, basically, of all of our vectors. So np.average, and then we're gonna add that to our new, basically a new centroids list. So we're gonna say new underscore centroids dot append, and then we append the tuple version of the new centroid. Uh, that will become apparent down the line while we're doing that. Because uh, basically a tuple and NumPy arrays have different uh, attributes than things that you can do with them. So we're going to be converting this to a tuple for now because later on we're going to have to reference some things. And anyway, it'll be apparent, more apparent later on why we're doing that, but we're just converting an array to a tuple, okay. So then um, that will be Basically, we're done with the for i and centroids. So now we're gonna come back over and we're just in line with this for loop. We've completed the for loop, we're ready to go on. So now what we're gonna say is we wanna get the unique elements from uh, the new centroids list. Okay, so we're gonna say uniques equals the sorted value of list, of the list version of the set of new centroids. Okay, so this is why we were using a tuple because you can get a set of tuples and set just basically is unique elements. Uh, and you could do something like NumPy has a unique, like np.unique, I'm pretty sure, or uniques maybe. Um, but the problem is it gives you, it's the unique of each value in the array. It's not unique of the arrays, which is really frustrating. So anyway, we can use set and take the set of a bunch of tuples and we can figure out which ones are the unique versions. And then we're taking the list version and then we are sorting that list. Fantastic. So that's the unique centroids. Because again, as there, as we get sort of like a convergence, we're gonna find that many centroids are the identical copy of another centroid. So what's the, we don't need two of the exact same centroids. So that's kind of how we get convergence and whittle them down over time. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say uh, prev underscore centroids equals the dict version of centroids. And uh, so that again is just our way of copying the uh, centroids dictionary without taking the attributes and all that. Um, and that way we can like save it. And as we modify centroids, it's not also modifying previous centroids. And then we're gonna say uh, our new centroids, we're just gonna define a new centroids dictionary. So we're just gonna say again, centroids equals empty dict. But remember, this was an empty dict, then we populated it. And then now we're actually within this while true loop as we start modifying centroids. So centroids is empty dict again, but then we're gonna say for i in range of the len of the uniques. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna say centroids i equals np.array, so we're converting back to that array version of the unique ith element. Fantastic. So then, 
what we say is we're going to re revert to our innocent until proven guilty again. So we're going to assume we're optimized unless we find a reason why we're not. So we check to see if there's any movement. So for I in centroids, and I believe this will be identical to that k-means code that we wrote. Um, but it'll be if not np.array underscore um, np.array equal. So if not, the if, if basically if, if the the element, so that first of all, this is why we sorted the list. So we sorted these lists because we wanted to make sure, because at any given time, it's kind of like random which one would be which as we append them and, and, and iterate through them because they don't normally have an order. So when we sort that list and then we create the centroids based on that sorted list, the centroids are now sorted. Uh, so then we can say, we can iterate through the previous version and the new version, they're sorted in the same way. So then we can find out if they're uh, equal or not this way. Um, so now that I'm thinking about, it, we probably don't, this probably is not the same code from k-means. I don't recall doing this from k-means, but I might have. It's been a while. Centroids i, like a few days. <laughs> previous centroids i. So we're just comparing the two arrays to see if they're equal. If they're not, we say optimized equals false. And then um, we could break it here. We could say most likely, well, we could break the for loop. We could say if, if, uh, if not optimized break. So that breaks the for loop. And then again, we could ask if not optimized break. Let me add the D here. I think that'll work. And that'll save us from continuing to iterate through uh, centroids, if we found one, one that's moved, there's no reason to continue. And especially if you have a very large data set, that'll save a lot of processing. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. That should work. Anyway, uh, so there's that. And then finally, now we're outside of this while true loop, right? So once we finally are optimized, um, or rather, <laughs> what a noob. Okay, so for I, if not optimized, you want to break this for loop? right? There's no reason to continue on. But then if optimized, we break out of the wow loop. Okay. What a noob. Okay. So now outside of this wow loop, right? So we're basically two tabs over. I swear I hit tab, but I guess not. Let's see. One, two, right? So in line with the wow loop now. So coming on down here, we're going to say now, once we're all done, we're going to reset our centroids finally. So self.centroids equals whatever the centroids are when we're done. And then um, coming down now one tab over still within our class, we're going to just define predict. We're not actually going to populate it for now, but we'll just throw it in there. Predict will pass for now. And then coming on down here, we're going to say CLF equals mean uh, shift. And then we're going to say clf.fit, and we're going to fit that x parameter there, or the x stuff, not parameter, x variable uh, that we defined up there. Fit x, and then we're going to say uh, whatever the centroids are, the, we're going to uh, grab those from clf.centroids. We will, we could print the centroids, I don't want to see much point though. So then what we're going to do is we're going to scatter what we scattered up here. So we'll just copy this, copy paste, uncomment, uncomment. So that scatters the data. Now we'll scatter the uh, centroids. So we're going to say 4C in centroids, plt.scatter. Uh, and we're going to scatter, let's see, centroids C0, and then centroids C1. We'll say the color equals K. Marker will be a star and then S size 150. Okay, great. So let's see what we got. <gasps> For I in range len data, let's try again. Band width not defined, of course. Oh, you're killing me. Okay, so self, let's see, self dot, I, th I just forgot to change these, derp. And I think otherwise I don't use the bandwidth now. So let's try it one more time. Oh my goodness. This is a lot. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of errors. Okay, coming down. So for I uniques, 
So unique. Okay, let's try one more time. Oh my goodness. There we go. Okay, cool. So here you can see uh, we've done the clustering algorithm. And sure enough, we got our cluster center here, here, and here. So that appears to have worked in the way we intended. Now, um, I'll let you guys sleep happy for now uh, without ruining too much of your parade. But I will just point out that that worked very nicely, mostly because we set this radius to 4. What if we set it to 4D? Waiting. It's taking forever. Okay, setting it to 40, we see that oh, we found one cluster center, which is basically all of these data points because everything is within a radius of 40. What if we set it to two? Okay, I guess I'm really raining on your parade, sorry guys. So anyway, setting it to two worked out for these two clusters, but this one didn't work out. These are too, too much spread out. So now they got their own little, each one is a cluster center. Okay, that's pretty unfortunate and as the scientist, how are you supposed to know without like looking through your data set, I guess, and then you're gonna have to like figure out what this radius ought to be? That doesn't make any sense. Um, that's not unsupervised machine learning in my opinion. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna work on how we can just automate this and not have to hard code in, Not I guess it's not really hard coding, but basically it's hard coding that value. Uh, how we can just automatically determine a decent radius to use, but then also use those various layers of bandwidths and then just simply apply a weight. Because basically the, the radius being like, like allowing a radius that is the size of 40 is great. As long as, like let's say you're, you're clustering here, right? These data points here should have a much higher weight. They're closer to the cluster center than say these points over here. So if you apply a much higher weight to them, you're more likely to have uh, that average here. And the more that you're penalized for outliers, you're more likely to get these clusters correct. Okay. So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to uh, this point on this code and all that, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time,